I will tell you this in all of my talks in all of my travels in all of my encounters one of the number one things that comes up as a a pause for people is bitcoin's volatility and for whatever reason this holds back a great many people for, who actually even get to the place or point of believing that bitcoin does really have an important role to take they can't many can't seem to get past its wild volatility as we all know there are two types of volatility right there's upside volatility and there's downside volatility so what many of these people don't understand is that bitcoin it has a volatility bias to the upside by 3 to 1 so that's the kind of volatility that you actually want in an asset volatility is vitality you do not want death a dead person is not volatile a dead person is not volatile a 95 year old person in a wheelchair has very little vitality or volatility but a 12 year old a 15 year old is more rambunctious more energetic more vital more volatile you were more volatile at 15 years old than you probably are today so volatility is not bad it is a sign of life it is a sign of vitality and it's especially not bad if the volatility is skewed to the upside as it is in bitcoin so remember this this is a metric i want you to remember bitcoin's volatility is skewed to the upside by 3 to 1 it is largely good volatility so if downside volatility is bad and good side upside volatility is good its upside volatility outpaces its downside volatility by 2 to 1 by 3 to 1 in the trading world we often professional traders at times refers to a metric called the sortino ratio now you can google this you can look this up it's called the sortino ratio so when we're looking for a stock whether a stock is worthy to be traded frequently regularly for daily weekly gains we will often look at the sortino ratio and what the sortino ratio does is it measures basically good volatility versus bad volatility so it will measure how much does this stock let's say go up for every unit it goes down in price if this stock goes down by one unit but when it goes up it goes up by two units that's a very positive sortino ratio the reason why we as traders will look at a sortino ratio not because we want all of our stocks to have an upside bias we don't we want some to have a downside bias but we want to know which ones have an upside bias and which ones that have negative sortinos have a downside bias so we know that this group of stocks should be primarily used to short this group of stocks with very high sortino ratios you should not be shorting these most of the time you should be going long most of the time when something has a high sortino ratio it's basically telling you that it has an upside bias it's like pushing a a beach ball underwater and it buoys to the upside more aggressively by two times or three times or four times or what have you and so bitcoin as a financially traded tradable asset today has a very high sortino ratio which means that it's like a hockey stick to the right that for every downside unit it has almost two upside units so let me show you this if you take a look at we're we're measuring a period from february 2020 to february 2024 and you see that for this four year period we're measuring bitcoin against the s&p 500 and there the kagers are just 
It's wild. S&P 500 over this period had a CAGR of 13.6%. Bitcoin has had a CAGR of uh, 58%. That is crazy. That is crazy high. Guys, there's nothing with a CAGR like this. And it's actually going to go up because this has this is incorporating the 74 plus per 76 plus percent drawdown in Bitcoin's price in 2020. So as we move into 2025, you're going to see that CAGR go up and surpass 100, maybe even surpass 200 because Bitcoin's historical CAGR in the past is around 213%. But it does change depending upon where you measure the CAGR in Bitcoin cycle. All right. So when we measure in 2025, this will probably be near 200%. In the trading world, risk is defined by standard deviations, right? So basically, Bitcoin, when I tell you that Bitcoin is an 80 vol asset, this is what I'm referring to. I'm referring to a standard deviation measurement against Bitcoin's price, price. This is how you measure risk in anything. You measure it through its standard deviation. And so when I say Bitcoin has an 80, is an 80 vol asset, I'm talking about its standard deviation. Well, it's coming down actually. So I can't legitimately tell you that Bitcoin has an, is an 80 vol asset anymore. It's more like a 73 vol asset now, at least over the past four years. So its volatility is def definitely dampening, right? Now, sharp ratio is something that all of my traders, all of my traders use. They use it as a metric to improve and tighten up their trading. But it's the Sortino ratio that I want to draw your attention to, where what this is showing you is that Bitcoin is dramatically more volatile than the S&P. But for every unit of risk, Bitcoin is far more profitable. Bitcoin, Bitcoin pays you more for every unit of risk than the S&P pays you for its unit of risk. So when I look at these Sortino rates, I would put everything into Bitcoin and not in the S&P because I'm getting rewarded more for every unit of risk. The unit of risk for the S&P and the unit of risk for Bitcoin, they're equal, but I'm only paid 1.01 extra for taking the same unit of risk in the S&P. If I take the same unit of risk in Bitcoin, I'm paid 1.86. Why would I choose the S&P 500 if I am paid more for the same amount of risk, for the same unit of risk? This is how we judge in the professional trading world using sharp ratio standard deviations and the Sortino ratio, what stocks to trade, what stocks should have an upside bias, what stocks should have a downside bias, which stocks are delivering um, more upside bias for, for my unit of risk, which stocks are delivering more downside bias for my unit of risk and so forth and so on. And um, most people don't do this in their trading because, and that's why most people lose money. There's no method, there's no system, there's no approach. There's no, there's nothing applied to anything, but let's check the news and da, 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 da. And that's why we take money from these traders every single day. But we do rely on these metrics. And I wanted you to understand where I come from why I tell you that it is stupid to short Bitcoin with when Bitcoin has a Sortino ratio of 1.86. Like you're fighting a Sortino ratio that over time is going to send you to the poorhouse as a short seller of Bitcoin, right? You don't short something with a Sortino ratio of 1.86. You might get lucky once, you might get lucky twice, but if you do it long enough, I am telling you, you're going to lose everything that you own. All right. We want, when you short something, you want an inverse Sortino ratio. 
where now the odds are so overwhelmingly in your favor that you can basically throw darts at a chart anytime and basically make money. But with Bitcoin, you don't want to be a net shorter. You're going to win because it's upside is is so like a hockey stick up into the right with a Sortino ratio of 1.86 that the accumulator of Bitcoin during the downdrafts beats everybody. So buying on the red when you have a Sortino ratio of bias to the upside of 1.86, the red bar buyer wins. The, the buyer in the bear market destroys everyone when that buying and accumulation is applied to a 1.86 Sortino ratio asset. All right. So very important. 